Hi there, everybody. Welcome to this week's Paint Party live stream. So glad to have you joining. It looks like there's a few of you online. How did everybody survive the giant global um, blackout of Facebook and Instagram? It's still acting a little wonky. Um, I wasn't able to resync Facebook into the live stream. So those of you who are on are probably on YouTube. Um, I think it's also streaming to Twitter. So if we have some Twitter folks and Twitch as well, if we have uh, Twitter and Twitch folks, I want to welcome you all to the live stream. I'm excited to have you. All right. We are going to be painting this evening. Um, I missed the last couple weeks because I was out of town and stuff going on. So I'm glad to be back in the studio. I have been painting just not on the stream. So um, have been keeping busy and I'll show you some of the stuff I've been doing um, recently. But I'm excited to get started tonight. Excited to have you. Let me get all decked out before I forget my, before I forget my, uh, hey there Lola. I'm not late. I am right on time, Mr. Karras. I am right on time. All right. Got my clothes protected. I never, I never get paint on my clothes except the time that I would forget to put on the apron, and so that is uh, a necessity. But I am painting barefoot and um, shorts and a t-shirt today because we got up to I think it was like close to 80 degrees today which is I think 10 to 15 degrees warmer than normal but I'm going to take it because next week we're dropping down into the 40s and 50s so fall weather is right on our tail and uh, shortly after that I'm sure we'll be in winter weather so I'm enjoying this prolonged really mild fall that we've had so far. All right, let's jump in. And as always, those of you who are joining us late or as you come in, pop in, pop out whenever you would like. So glad to have you. One of the paintings I've been working on, let me show you just to catch up. Those of you who haven't seen already on Instagram, this is one I did the last couple of days. Um, this was from a reference photo just of some lemons hanging on a tree. I want to point out just a couple, what I was actually working on, which is what we'll be working on again today. Um, I am trying to develop a looser brush style and an ability to communicate and to get the painting to render in a way that is representative of what I want, but with looser brush strokes, so more expressive. Um, so this painting was painted entirely with this brush, which is a one inch flat brush. So you can't do a lot of detail work with this brush because, well, it's just, you can't really do details with a one inch, uh, edge. So what it does is it gives you a more expressive finish. Um, and so I'm really pleased with how this turned out. What I also focused on was getting my values balanced with the darkest darks and the lightest lights. Obviously you see that here in the lightest part of the middle um, lemon, which was my intention to draw the eye into the painting. Oh, let me turn it that way so you can see. Um, and then by using tones that are actually brown tones for like these background lemons and more kind of reddish brown and orange for these lemons it helps them kind of recede into the background and I did the same with the leaves I only highlighted a very little bit right around here again to bring the eye in a circle right in here and so a lot of there is a little detail down here but all of this out here is just basically unrefined side strokes so was really pleased with how this turned out and we're going to work on another um, one which you may see behind me ton um, tonight. You'll see the reference photo. So let me put that up for you all. Hey there, mom. So glad to have you. Let me 
get your reference photo so you can follow along. So we're gonna work on this painting of pears in a bowl, pears in a bowl. Again, practicing the looser brush. I'm gonna use this same brush, looser brush strokes, and kind of balancing the values. On the previous one with the lemons, I the first sitting, I did about an hour and a half, two hours, and um, was able to get through the first kind of setup. And then last night I refined it and finished it, basically just tweaking the lines to make sure that I got distinct lines and then adding some of the, when I say detail work, some of the highlights. Um, so I, we should be able to get pretty far this evening. Thanks so much, I appreciate the encouragement. All right. Let me also, before I forget, put on the, we're gonna put on the, um, not palette, yeah, the palette there. Um, we'll see if the, that light works. Uh, tried to, uh, I don't know if it's better without the lights or with the lights. The camera kind of adjusts either way. Okay, well, let us get started and we will see what we can do. I'll bring you all in, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit closer here, right up on my canvas, hopefully, so you'll be able to see what I'm doing as I work. All right. Need to adjust this a little bit. Let's see. There. I think we got as about as close as we can get. and as direct on as we can get. I wonder, and it doesn't matter if I turn on the lights because the camera adjusts for it. Someday I'll get better cameras. All right. Okay, so the first step that we want to do here is um, we want to lay out the composition in broad, literal broad strokes. And so we want to do the dark, um, our darkest colors first. And so let me put on some ultramarine blue and then We'll do shades of red for the red pairs and brown for the brown. Also, if you are watching on YouTube, my most recent episode of my vlog went up today, so you're welcome to check that out. I took a trip to Little Rock, as I mentioned. Or I said I was out of town, but I went to Little Rock. And then promptly forgot to video footage. So, But I had some footage I recorded earlier of a hike through the hills here and so you get to see some of the beautiful colors settling into the Black Hills. All right so y'all should be able to see oh yeah the palette it looks pretty good the colors look pretty accurate. I wonder if I move this out if it will create a there's a little bit of a, I propped it up so it would hopefully adjust the glare, but the glare's there no matter what, because my light is above. All right, well, we'll just make it work. 
Okay, so what I'm going to look at in the reference photo is where are my darkest darks. Let me start with the darkest darks. And I'm just going to try to put in blocks. So I'm going to take this blue. I'm going to take a magenta so I get a kind of a purple color. And then in order to cut the the blue, I'm going to take some brown, dull it down a little bit, and that should give us a pretty good little dark color. All right. When I, I want to kind of squint, let's see. We're just putting big blocks in and then we'll refine this as we go. All right, so I'm looking, I'm kind of squinting my eyes to look at like, not the shapes, but where are these shadows that I see? Where do I see shadow? All right, there we go, quick little block in with some shadow. It's rendering pretty purple. You guys are seeing it more dark than it actually is here. So I'll have to darken some of those spots, but then let me take this color, the same color, Add a little more magenta to it. A little red. See what we get. And then come in with some of the mid-tones. I'm really just doing two, basically two colors. Um, just to start getting that laid in. Oop, that's darker. That came in darker, so we'll just use it to kind of start refining some of that. All right. And what I'm planning to do is lay out the basic blocks as I see them of the... Um, fruit and then we'll come over to the we'll come over to the um, background and then give the fruit a little bit of time to dry
But that's kind of what's going on in my head right now. Right now, all I'm concerned about is with getting like light and dark set out kind of correct. I'm not really worried about color at all and not even form. You'll notice there's just not a lot of uh, form yet for this. So I'm basically taking red and purple and kind of just giving some idea of highlights and shadow. Oh, where did my cursor go? There we go. Welcome, Bob G. Okay, even just with these kind of blocks, you're starting to see shape. And remember what I said through this whole process, this whole like learning process, as you get the values correct or better, all of a sudden they will start to communicate volume or, or the three dimensional, three dimensioned qualities of the object you're painting. So as I refine the values, that should start to improve. So now let's jump to the brown. And let's create a dark, a dark um, shadow color for the for the dark uh, for the brown pairs. So I'm mixing a little of the ultramarine blue, the um, raw umber or burnt umber, and then the Excuse me, raw sienna. Okay, so we come in here then and start putting in this as just a shape. Need some more of this color. I'm going to need some more ultramarine blue. I was really pleased with the um, lemon painting. I posted it back into um, the Facebook group before Facebook crashed um, that gives reference photos for artists and I tagged the person who had taken the picture and you know thanked her for letting me use the use the painting or the photo as a reference um, and somebody commented there oh is that um, are you using oils? And I said, no, acrylic. And they were like, oh, it looks like oil. Well, I'm almost positive it's because of this technique. Um, again, I'm using my one inch, oh, you can't really see it, my one inch brush. So I'm not able to really do much detail at all.
I have to keep the technique very and the brushwork very loose. So in doing that, my my intent is to keep my brush strokes loose so that I can uh, so that I can not get so tied up with the the detail too early. Now notice on my palette, I have this scale of the dark, which is like this color here. And then I have kind of this mid-tone, which is this color right here. And you can't really see the distinction on the palette because my camera adjusts for the, or on the canvas because my camera adjusts for lighting and color. But um, then I have kind of a little bit lighter tone out here which should allow me to start to put in just the suggestion of highlight. And what this should do fairly quickly is start to give us a sense of some shape, some, some uh, sense of form. Okay. Now, and the challenge is always going to be as I'm doing this, which you will notice is pulling back, not going for me, it's not going too light too fast. Because, and I've heard that this is true with a lot of beginning artists, our eye is drawn to light, the light parts, and so we want to go there first, straight in. And uh, once you go too light, and this is something that I really did a lot when I was starting, is I went way too light, way too early, and I brought in white way too much. And I used white as a... as a, I guess, uh, to try to solve the challenge of not having balanced my um, values. Now the challenge with this is the red is a very transparent color, and so is the yellow. So I'm noticing it's not covering very well at all. I can see the, the purples and the blues are really going to stand out. And they're going to shine through. So what we have to do, we'll just, which will serve us in the long run, is we're going to have to keep adding layers. We're going to have to give it a chance to kind of start to but in the long run that will give us a more pleasant all the layers will show in some regard and will start to give us a what we want so, all right, let's start. Now we need to start making some decisions about um, about how, not the composition, but what we want to highlight or what we want to be the focal point of the painting because it won't, we're not, I'm not at this point, when I started, you'll remember that I was trying to duplicate pictures, uh, the reference photo. 
I don't want to duplicate the reference photo, but what I want to do is try to um, draw the viewer's eye in, and I'm just giving some, I'm just doing the edge of this bowl just so we get a sense of how it's laid out on the painting. And we'll, we can adjust that as we go. So any suggestions y'all have, you're about 10 seconds behind me, so I'll wait as I'm painting this ridge. Um, where do you think the focus or what would make an interesting painting? What's going to make it interesting for us in the painting? What should we hi you know, what should be the the thing we want the viewer to focus on? What do you think? Feel free to pipe up in the comments if you have perspective or thoughts on this. We have the basic the basic uh, layout. trying to make some decisions. I'm sitting back for a few minutes and just looking at this and trying to decide, do I actually want to duplicate and do kind of the speckled blue bowl? Do I want a more generic bowl? Um, do I want a lighter background? Do I want a darker background? What color do I want the background? Um, that's what's going through my head right now. And I don't know for sure. So any ideas or help that you all have, any thoughts you have along the way would be super awesome. Welcome to the couple of you that have popped in after the intro. Glad to have you. Everybody's quiet in the comments today. Nobody has or Everybody turned on the live stream and then walked away to get their dinner or something, which is fine, 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 fine. Um, hmm. Let me... I'm just really not sure what to do with this background. So I'm going to play around a little bit. I'm mixing a kind of grayish brown color just going to put in some color here we can always change it this will give us a little time for the uh, for the pears to the first layer of pear to kind of dry. And by putting a little color on the canvas, we start to see if we like it, if we don't, we can make adjustments. I don't not like this, but We'll see how it is. Uh. 
a teal. Oh, and you said, Lola says a dark background, make the play gray, the plate gray. Okay, you're thinking kind of where I was going. Um, I'm going to get this layer on here, kind of this greenish gray. It is almost a teal because I'm bringing in, I mean, it's a very, very light teal, and I don't think it shows, well, it kind of shows on, on there, on the screen correctly. Um, but it's more of a green teal than a, or more yellow. But I think it could work. And then we can darken, I was thinking of darkening the edges, doing this kind of a color, but then put it dark out here on a secondary layer or a tertiary layer. And then we're doing kind of a gradient where it's darker here so that it brings our eye upward into the painting. We'll see what you guys think as I experiment some more. What I was thinking, and probably Lola, what you were thinking as well, if I can bring in kind of a muted teal like this, even if it's darker, but it's like a more of a yellow, yellow tone teal, um, it should really work well. And then kind of bluer toward the bottom, it should really work well with the um, the red and yellow of the pears. Those will pop out. Notice by just putting that background how much more vibrant these colors are starting to see without doing anything to them. Isn't that interesting? Um, so yeah, it's really, oop, I put a lot of yellow in that. A lot of yellow. Let's tone it down with the blue. Okay. This is kind of what I'm thinking, something like this. And I could go even darker, but kind of darker as we get out to the edges. By doing this, I'll get multiple layers on the background too, which will then show through. And I think that's what gives it also a, a similar, so it looks more like uh, oil painting as well. Not sure though. Let me take some of this, tone it down. With the uh, blue, see if I can get it to a sort of gray. Just to give the sense of this plate, we can always come in and change that. Again, multiple layers will help us 
not only cover the canvas, but will help us refine what we're doing. Okay, gives us a kind of sense of the plate being there. Now I need to let it dry a little bit because I'm just taking paint off the top. All right, let's come back in. We're about 35 minutes in, 38 minutes in. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, I'm, I'm not unpleased with this. Because I really want the pairs to be the, the focal point. But I don't want to do every painting the same with the dark. Because it's easy just to go really dark with the background and then have highlights in the middle. and then. Um, but I'd like to have this be more of a, a daylight summer feel. But still have something that kind of pops. Um, in the reference photo, I really like how the light is coming from this side, so I think we'll keep that. But um, I'm trying to figure out where, because in like in the lemon picture, I'm going to put the lemon picture back up, the painting. You know, we had some detail around with the leaves and then the center lemon I made that the focal point but in this one we don't have leaves we do have a bowl but I'm kind of muting that down and not using the bowl that she took the picture from so um trying to think again kind of be intentional before I start putting more color onto the canvas. What do I want? Where do I want the viewer's eye to go? Any any thoughts? Anybody have any ideas? Or if you were painting this, where would you put the viewer's eye? Where would you try to help them pay most attention? That's the fun part as the artist because in a picture, the camera captures the whole thing pretty equally. Um, the lighting is relatively the same, but in a painting, we can, we can choose where we want the viewer's eye to go. So... While we think about this, I'm going to take, I always forget to take process photos when I'm live streaming. Um, and I'm going to stand up and step back a little bit. It's always encouraging for me to see when I, when I look back over an hour or two that I paint and see multiple versions of the painting emerge. It's really encouraging. All right. Well, here's what I'm thinking. Let me know if you, if you guys like this. I think I want to make this center pair the, the focal point because it's already composed that way, kind of, and the reference photo suggests that that will be a good idea. What I think I want to do then is push this one and this one pretty far to the back, as well as this, this one into kind of the shadows and put this, have this one be the closest, kind of how it's arranged, but value-wise, have this pair be the next focal point and this one be the primary focal point. And what I'm trying to do is create kind of a, a circle of where the eye is drawn into this, but it has to focus here because of the difference in the highlights. What do you guys think? Or do you think anything at all? Any thoughts at all?
if we do that, now um, the challenge is going to be, or whatever we do, now I'm going to have to, we're going to start in with the second layer, a little more definition. I'm kind of sort of pleased with how this turned out. These ones are a little off. Um, the brown ones are okay. But I'm going to come in again because I have the tendency to go too bright. I'm going to come in and go darker, um, starting with probably more dark than it needs to be, much more dark than it needs to be. Um, let me show you what I'm thinking, or at least start what I'm thinking and see what you guys think. I'm coming in with really dark, the dark brown and our good old ultramarine blue. To create a very dark. So the ult or the um, burnt umber is the dark brown, but it's it's brown, but brown basically is, see how it's a reddish tone? So it has reds in it. So the red and the blue are going to create a very deep, deep, deep purple hue. This is really dark. It's much darker probably than we need. But we're going to come in here in our darkest spots and lay that right in. Um, Again, the tendency is to go too bright, and so if we start with dark, with it really dark, then we have lots of spectrum to go with. But I notice... I was thinking the middle red pair too. Perfect. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, the composition of whoever, I can't remember who it was that took this photo, but like what they did was already perfect. Now notice what I'm doing here. I mean, not perfect, but it was very helpful in that regard. Notice what I'm doing here. Um, this is different from the reference photo. And I want to point it out because this is the thought process I'm going through. And I'm going to try to be better on these live streams of explaining my thought process so it makes sense when you see me do something. So I'm coming in here. Notice that I am bringing my dark shadow all the way in on this pair. Almost the whole pair is sitting back there in shadow. Um, because when I get the rest of it done, I really want this pair to be almost completely in shadow. I want it to sit pretty far back behind this one. So I want really dark lines right here where it butts up against the brighter one so that the bright one really pops forward, if that makes sense. So that's what I'm adjusting that's different you can see in the reference photo the indication where there's shadow that's pretty dark right there, but I'm taking it a little bit further and putting most of the pair. And then what we'll do is we'll come in with just a very light, like a purple, a dark magenta purple, and put it in the middle. And that will look like a highlight because it's on that dark kind of background. So, but you can see it's not covering there. So I'm going to let it dry a little bit and then come back and refine that. Now, I want this one to, this is actually in the picture. It's furthest one back, except for the backside of that one. So I want to do something similar there. I want to create this dark color and kind of sink it back. And we'll have to see how this works. I'm honestly not sure exactly how it's going to work um, with the with the brighter lighting because we have 
lighting that is um, coming from this side. And we do want it to look like daylight. So I'm not sure how this is all going to work out, but this is part of my process, like just trying to figure out will this, what, what I think in my head, is this right? Is it true? Does it work? And I don't know, so we will we will play with this a little bit. Definitely a fun. It's really fun, like the this brown. I can already tell, so I'm going to have to come back and dull it down. Um. because the red is making it look way, it's gonna make it pop out too much. I'm trying to, again, one of my goals is to create um, more intentional brush strokes. So you saw me doing some of that um, already. Just giving, like, figuring out how to, and I'm making some pretty major form adjustments because I realized that I was off when I first put the first run through. But again, all of these will really help us in the end. All right, sort of starting to look like pears. I want to take some of this dark color into that same, just bring in Remember I said I made this too brown, so we're just going to push it back a little bit and give us a sense of, a little more sense of uh, volume, the shape. I think I want this to be pretty dark. This, I want to create a shadow that's maybe not necessarily there in the, in the, uh, reference photo. Okay. All right, we're just playing this game little by little, um, raising our values. Notice how now this looks too way too dark, which I did on purpose. So now I'm going to come back and see, okay, 
do I take a little bit of magenta with that brown we had. Whoop, that may be too bright. This has a little red and yellow in it, so that's why it brightened this up way too much. Um, because the yellow, you just need a very little bit. So we're going to cut some of that out by adding more blue. It's crazy. You would never think that the foundational, when you just look at this picture, like if I had started painting this last year when I started, I would have never looked at this painting and thought, oh, the majority of the colors I'm going to use are browns, these two browns, and the blue, and a little magenta. I would have jumped right in with the reds because the reds are what stands out. So, okay, now I'm coming in with some purple. It's still a very dark purple, but it lightens it up a little bit and it's got a lot of brown in it. Oh, there we go, that might work. Let's see, there's no red, but by doing kind of this brown, purple, it can give us some of that. Maybe. We'll see. We'll start. We'll keep blending it. We may have to darken it again, but gives us the idea. There, I don't want to take the paint off, so I'm just going to leave it. But see how just adding a little bit of light there makes this, that little suggestion of a shadow, makes that look a little bit 3D. And this is, this color is like almost, I mean, it's dark brown, but look at next to that. Isn't that crazy? Um, and then let me come, because it was a good color over here, so let me bring it over here. And you could see the undercoat when we started was pretty bright red. So it's really cool to start to see that work. Color some of this. Then probably the final painting or the final version of this, I will come in and really refine some of these lines and make them much stronger. Um, let me go in, just put in, because I covered it up a little bit, let me take a dark, this dark color back in. I really want to make sure those, oh, it's like a blue. That's not working. But I'm going to use it. To create some, oh, that looks really blue on there. Now, one trick I've been exploring is I take the darkest part of this part, or the lightest part, sorry, the lightest part of this. So let me add a little more of this, and I'm actually going to add a tone of red. I'm not raising the value or the chroma, the color much at all, but I want to take this color as the, the lightest part over here and make it the darkest part over here. So let's come into this pair and start putting in some 
dark sections because it helps it then to be connected, but it also helps me not to, again, go too bright too quick. And once I see that that value works, then I come back with, that's last night, then I did the refining on the lemons. Then once I saw the value worked with like browns and oranges, then I could come back with the, the light, um, actually the light, uh, yellow. So, okay, now I'm going to bring in just a tad of yellow instead. That's another thing I've been doing. Instead of using white to brighten, I've been just using lighter things on my... So let me take a little of this bright red to raise the chroma instead of, before I would add white. Ooh, that brought it up a bunch. Let's see what this does. Um, Cause I just want a little bit of, oh yeah, it works. I want a little bit of, to start to give a suggestion of the highlight. Eventually I'll come in and highlight this much of the whole thing. All right, I'm liking where this is going. So let me come over here. Then let's this up just a tad. probably going to be too much because it's too dark but now we come in here add some purple magenta some purple Ooh, I might have to turn on the fan up here. It's crazy. I'm starting to get warm. Let me see if I can reach the fan. It's probably good to step away from the... Oop, except I'm attached to a microphone. So, okay, let's see. Ooh. All right. Then I'll take this opportunity to step back from the picture a little bit. All right, 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 okay. What do y'all think so far? Are we getting there a little bit, little bit at a time? I feel confident that I'm executing what I'm saying in my head, but I'm not sure it's all gonna work to pull the painting together, but we shall see. Um, let me 
go over here. I'm mixing some of this yellow ochre, which is the yellow color, and then the burnt umber to tone it down. By taking a red into the yellow, we get that toned down. Well, it's brown into the yellow, but we get that toned down, actually a shade of orange. So that's what I'm doing. And I want to experiment coming in with some of this, see if it's too much. Again, I can't really do detail work. I'm just kind of using the most detail I can get is basically just the edge of the brush. Um, to communicate or to communicate uh, form and shape. But it forces me to do it more with the colors and the values appropriately. Um, so it really forces me to, uh, the good thing is by doing that then or by learning to paint this way, I will be able to um, go back when I want to to more detail, deeper detail brush. And because I have a better understanding of the use of values and um, brush strokes and things, thank you, it will... Uh, It will serve me no matter if I'm using a big brush or a little brush. That makes sense. Okay. I always have the problem of going doing too much also. I think I did a little too much over here, but that's okay because we, we have a long way to go. We can blend it in. So I do like how this is coming with this light background and not making the... Um, not making the plate its own kind of centerpiece. I do like what's happening with the, um, that the pairs will stand out, it appears, they will stand out better. So let me do a little bit of, let me give the pairs a rest, let them breathe a little bit. I'm coming back over here and let me just I think I want to take the red out of there I want to take it pretty gray and I want to come this is rendering as kind of a purple color that's okay doesn't look awful I want to give some more. The other thing that I'm learning by doing this just in kind of stages like this, where it kind of, I mix a little bit, mix a color, put it on. Um, what's kind of fun that I'm realizing is um, like this, sometimes you do something and it's like, oh, that's all I need. I don't need anything more defined or more. And I don't know that that's the case. We may really want to come in with detail on this bowl, but by laying in the foundation, I have a really good start to that. And I'm not too worried about the, especially with the pears, I'm not too worried about the uh, 
Wow, it must be extra dry today. The palette's drying very fast. Okay. All right, we kind of have now a purplish blue. It's all, it's rendering a little more blue on the camera than it is in real life. I think I'll probably want to tone it down um, to more, um, like Lola had said, kind of a grayish tone. But at least we're not losing kind of the composition, so that's good. Okay. Now I'm going to let that sit for a minute. All right, always goes so quick. We're already past the top of the hour. Okay. I'm gonna see if I can blend. I'm trying to go as long as possible. I have another plate over here. My normal white uh, palette. The problem, it dries like this color dries the paint dries very quick, but then when I start mixing on top of this dried paint, then it makes it wet and it peels off as little, I don't know if you can see it, like little uh, paint boogers in the, uh, and so I don't really want that. I don't know how I did that. Nope. How did I do that original? I think it was a little yellow. Yeah. I was like, how did I get that original green kind of green tone? It was, uh, it was the yellow. That's what I was missing. Okay, this is a little more tan than I want, I think. I think I do like the the green, or as Lola said, kind of the teal. But we'll use this for now, since we'll probably come back with multiple layers. Yeah, then we get those little paint boogers in the painting, which I don't want. The other thing that I need to do sometime on a live stream is uh, lack or uh, varnish a painting. I varnished several of my former paintings over the last week or two to get them ready to scan and because I scan all my paintings, so I have a digital copy of them. Um, oh, now this is a little too blue, but it gives us... We get lots of different perspectives, don't we? I think I like the gray, or I like the green. Bring me back some yellow. I like that green if I can duplicate it. Some white. Okay, let me switch this out so you all can see what I'm doing on my I was just mixing in my on my lap, but I'll try to do it where y'all can see. Yeah, I, I like the 
I like the green tone better. I don't know why the green just seems really uh, relaxing to me. So that's brightening, brightening that. Appreciate y'all hanging with me while I just experiment on this and see where we're going to go with it. I think I like it getting darker over on that side and lighter over here, but we'll see. That's not good. That's what I get for painting on the edge, literally on the edge of my... I did that last night and my... Whoops. My lemon had a big old divot in the center of it. And it was the center lemon, so I had to go back in, remix. It was at the end. And I had to remix the uh, painting, or the paint. All right. Okay, I'm really happy. I mean, less than about an hour in, hour and five minutes. I'm pretty happy how this is coming together. So we're starting to see what's happening here. Let me clean off my desk where there's some standing water. Okay, now I need to figure out what I want to do next. Where do I want to focus? I think the thing to do is focus on the center point um, a little bit because then that can tell us how much we need to really do with the others. If I refine these too much, then they end up distracting from that as well. At least that's what I think in my head right now. So we shall see what, what that actually means. All right. I wish I could. I don't know if I can. Uh, actually, maybe I might be able to move my, so you can see both. If I can put them both on there. I don't know if they'll both fit. Okay, yeah, let me move my water over here. Move my paintings out of the way. Uh, it might be time for a process photo. Yeah, I can start to see, start to see it come together from the previous photo, so that's cool. Yeah, this is, I don't know if it'll show on there. This was the previous photo, so look at the difference from what we did maybe half an hour ago to now. Isn't that 
kind of amazing. Oh. Okay. Now, I think what I want to do is, like I said, again, focus here. So let me mix a little... Well, again, I, let me go dark first. So I'm going to start with my darkest brown. And then a little tiny bit of maybe magenta instead of going red. Just a little magenta. Um, I think I need to add some there, that. Let's see what this does. Probably could have mixed the, there we go. Okay, want to just do the very top of this. The light is catching the top of this pair. It's coming down. Over the top like that. and take a little bit more red what's crazy is this is really dark but it's rendering as like really bright red but it's not so bringing in some red over here Now I'm adding actual red. Let me tone it with some. So I'm bringing, if you notice here, first I started with the burnt umber, then I'm coming to raw sienna, which is a reddish brown. And as I'm adding reds, I'm raising the chroma of the brown I'm adding in as well. Now I may need to add a little bit of blue just to just so it's not too blah, but we'll see. Okay, so this is going to be a where we want the highlights to go. And painting really is just adjusting chroma little by little until it gets the right kind of balance little by little. Okay, I'm adding slowly adding more color so this is magenta underneath this, but it's a little bit different, which you can't really tell on there. But let's add a little more blue, a little more magenta. So that we get a little bit of a start to blend it in.
whoops, went way over, but I'm pleased with what's happening here. Now, I'm going to try this. I don't know if this will help me or hurt me. And it looks like it's going to hurt me. But as Bob Ross says, they're happy little accidents. No mistakes. I feel myself starting to go into detail land. Too much. So, I'm going to back off right there a little bit. All right, it's getting there, ladies and gents. It's getting there. We are slowly getting where we need to be. So I'll take a few minutes, work a little bit on these yellow, um, these yellow ones. I still think I want this one to be the brightest, which it is, but I want to tone this down a little bit because it's a little aggressive. Um, and see what we can do. Then tomorrow or the next day or two, I can come back to this and refine the colors because I'm pretty pleased with how the balance of the, of the uh, values is turning out. So, excuse me, I just want to Let me see, that's, no, oh, that's still not as dark as I want it. Need to take some more of that yellow and red out of the, uh, okay. This is dark, I don't know if it's, it's a little, it's lighter than it has been though. 
So now we want to start blending some of this. While I'm here, I'm kind of refining some of these um, these lines. I want it to appear like the light's coming from more above. Um, so I kind of want to put all of this into shadow, but I'm going to need to put a little, let's take a little white, just a tad, bring this up a little bit, but I want it to sit back there pretty far. crazy what the eye sees versus what's there. With very little, I have to fix that a little bit, but with very little adjustment, just a sliver of brighter yellow. I can uh, suggest. Now this is the proper use of white. Notice I just added a very tiny little light white and it just raised the chroma of the color I already have on there. So it doesn't, it doesn't, um, if I added yellow or some, a color to brighten this, then it would pop way forward on the painting. So this is what I want to do, yeah. Now you can see that there's some volume there and it's three dimensional, but it's also like, not gonna jump up off the, up off of the, uh, out of the background. Okay, now I wanna take a dab of the real dark blue and my deep, deep brown. I wanna go in there. I'm just going to take the tip of my brush. I'm loading it pretty thickly, but I want to get just the tip of the brush. And I'm going to go in here now and place the, uh, I don't know if that's going to work. Uh, I need some more blue. I think it needs to be darker. It's hard for me to see because I get a glare as well. Okay, there we go. Let's take... That should give us what we're looking for. And I'll just do a dot, like, right here. And it's just going to suggest that there's... something there. Let me put some more shadow back in here. There. Putting a lot of shadow around this because I can always come back and, which I'm going to do now.
Oops. It's whoa. Okay, what did I do? A little white, um, but it was mostly blue. Let's make Notice how dark brown this is. Now, as we raise the chroma of these, it will, it will change the results of what we're getting. So I'm going to take this brown, though, over here and bring it into this pair here. It is not, uh, it is too wet. So... There. Need a little more blue, blue, blue. So. This is the actual work of the artist then, is deciding where we're going to put the, the viewer's attention by not painting exactly what we see, but what's in our eyes, or in our Moving right along, wise decision to ditch the blue plate special adds a quality to paint. Yeah, I think I think that's it. Is yeah, it's uh, making those decisions, and the more decisions I make like that, the more you know situations I'm in where it's like, oh, I want this to look this way, then it uh, yeah, it puts me in a better. So let's do the same. We're adding just a little bit of white, but actually let me come and put just a tad of that light brown in. So it's a little bit different in the yellow, a little bit different than the pair clear down in the on the bottom of the plate because we want this one to stand out a little bit. So... Because it is in my in my painting, it's sitting up higher. It's getting more light. So now that may backfire, but for now that works for me. I don't like it totally, completely, but maybe we'll see. I may have to let it dry a little bit. To, I'm going to try to warm it up a little bit. Yeah, that's too bright, but 
That's all right. We'll keep playing with this until we get it right. Okay. Yeah, I like this. All right, I know it's still 15 minutes left, but I think I'm going to wrap up now.
because I think I'm at a good point where the the values are starting to work and I think it will take probably one or two more sessions where I will just come in and refine now because the values are working now I'm just going to focus on refining color um, which is what I did with the lemons and now once I get it then the yellow and the and the reds of the of the pears will really pop out so I think I'm gonna leave it here um, for now and then come back to it tomorrow or the next day and finish it up but you guys can kind of see where we're going I think it really is starting to look like the paint the reference but not an exact duplicate which is kind of what I'm trying to strengthen my skills at doing so um, Oh, let me see. Step back. Take a process picture. Let me actually, I'm going to turn off my light here. Because that gives me a better, sometimes it gives me a better view of, because this has a lot of glare on it. All right, I'm going to move you all back here and raise you up so you can see me. I'm going to get rid of reference photo and palettes. All right, I appreciate each and every one of you who has um, who has uh, stayed with me. Um, I posted on Instagram before it crashed, um, but you can connect with me there, also here on YouTube. Because of the crash that Facebook just had, I think that I am going to um, really move forward with some sort of plan to begin building my audience outside of social media. Probably that will me be through things like Discord or Slack or some other app, which I'll give you all of that information ahead of time. Um, of course, I'll continue to use YouTube, but YouTube could crash as well. We, you never know. Um, back in the early days of the blogosphere, when I was, I used to blog, and uh, we would build an email list so we could email people. It was really old school, and. Um, of course, you don't get as many people opening an email as see a Facebook notification because Facebook or Instagram have have conditioned us to constantly be scrolling. We, I don't check my email near as often as I check social media. But seeing what these, I knew these social media platforms were um, kind of nefarious organizations, uh, maybe not intentionally, but the the results. Um, and so I've been trying to back away all that to say, I will let you know before I change anything, do anything, but definitely subscribe to YouTube, stay connected. You can go to Instagram when it comes up, if it's up, um, and check. I posted, um, a painting of some tomatoes that I had done for a commission. Um, similar to this, it was a bowl of tomatoes that I did for a friend uh, who commissioned that painting. So I, I couldn't post that until, or didn't want to post it until I had sent the final, um, painting to the client, but it has been sent, it has been received, it is appreciated. So I posted those pictures on Instagram. You can see that as well as what I've been working on lately. Um, but I want to say thank you so much for sticking with me, those of you that have. It's been so great having you back. I will try to set up another one of these for next Monday. I know I said when I moved I would be so excited because I have a lot of more free time to do more of these. The reality is I am painting more often, but I'm not doing these live streams as often. So I'll try to um, figure out a way that I can do live streams more spontaneously or something so that um, you can join um, and not have more options than just once a week. But I appreciate you all who are here at the beginning um, and that have been supporting me over this last year. It is a lot of fun to hang out with you and to get to chat with you while I paint. 
Um, and I'm going to continue to really think about how I can make these more engaging and more interesting. Um, so I'm going to be working on that over the next few months. But I am excited to continue growing and I feel like my paint skill is developing over time. So that's really encouraging as well. But I hope you all have a great week. Hope you get um, done what you need to, but not a lot more that you can relax and enjoy life and uh, spend some time with your friends and loved ones as you're able. And um, yeah, we will see you on next week's video. Be looking for that on YouTube. Take care, everybody. Have a great night. Thank you so much, Lola. It's been a pleasure, and I always appreciate you jumping in, even at the last minute's notice.